Good afternoon once again. This is Coffee Escapes coming to you from 7750. I hope you can see this. This is a a plate. On it is the face of my ancestor, King Sobuza II. And on it, it says His Majesty's Diamond Jubilee, 1921 to 1981. And obviously at the bottom here, it says King Sobuza II. King Sobuza II, the founder of, or the father of the modern day kingdom of Eswatini that came into being on Independence Day when the colonialists finally left the country and left the king to take charge of his kingdom in 1968. So this is the king that was, that is the father of the modern day kingdom of Eswatini. He celebrated his jubilee on the the official date is the 22nd, yes, the 22nd of December. So then it would have been on the 22nd of December of 1981. And then on the following year, on the 21st of August in 1982, he took a bow. In the kingdom of Eswatini, we don't say that our king has died. We say he has taken a bow. So that's what he did. He took a bow and he passed on to the next realm. I was never interested really in the kingdom as such or the royal family because I really just didn't see what it had, <laughs> that it had anything to do with me at all, you know? But, you know, as soon as God took a hold of my spirit and took a hold of me and my life, I started having a lot of dreams about the kingdom and his majesty, the late King Sokuza II. And I started studying a lot of things about my culture and the kingdom and the kings thereof. On my neck here now is the necklace that I bought when I was on trial from August through to the 5th of November, 2018. The final judgment was given on the 5th of November. And throughout that time, this neck, I mean, this necklace, with this kino, with the five stones on it, never left my neck. It was always on my neck. And God would comfort me by saying to me, listen to the octaves of King David. Listen to the octaves of King David. And so I had to actually, I'm not a musician, I don't understand music. But I understand God's language when he's speaking to me. So I started to pay attention to music and certain things about music. Anyway, um, in the last video, I found that I rambled on and on and on. And so for some reason, the timer that I set on the laptop didn't go off. So I ended up speaking for 37 minutes in 37 seconds and I thought oh my god that's too long but then the Holy Spirit said no it's not too long because he's in charge these are not my videos that I'm doing they're his they're for him they're for his kingdom and for, they are for his plans and purposes so anyway now that I have set that scene oh yes let me not forget look here here, yeah. this is the royal regalia of the royal family 
These are the feathers of the national bird of the kingdom of Eswatini. And um, they are called Emakwalakwala. The national bird is the Luri bird, the Kwalakwala. I'll talk about it another time, but those feathers of the Luri bird are what finish off the wings of the imperial eagle that is on the logo of 7750. It is, I have I, I explained on a previous occasion that it is it is the, the eagle that carries the breastplate of the high priest on its feet and its wings are out in full flight and the wings are finished off with the royal feather with, with, with those royal feathers of the royal family. So <laughs> I said from the beginning that this logo was a spiritual logo that was given to me in a vision. In the same manner that King Sopuza the second was given the vision for the flag of the kingdom of Eswati. So now I introduced this song, this Kwaito song called Manyonyoba in the last episode. And then I thought, let me actually listen to it again and listen to it again and keep listening to it because in case I missed something the last time and I discovered that I did miss something. You know, the song is quite fast when they are, I don't know whether to say they are rapping it or whatever it is that they are doing. Um, so if you are not listening, you, you miss a lot. And I, I realized there's a sentence I missed. Somewhere, the, the rapper goes, That's what he says. So he's still addressing this man who sneaks into the houses of other men. When the men leave, he sneaks in and he goes under the miniskirt, it says, and he does whatever he likes with the wives of those men. So it, it says when Uda Amanya Matota intend. To my understanding, what he's saying is that you are you, you you are eating other men at their heel. Remember what I said about the Achilles heel. In the Siswati language, the heel is called Sitenze. So I don't know what the meaning of this Zulu word, if it's Zulu, uh, because in Gauteng, the languages tend to be mixed up. So there's, a, they, there's this Fanagalo dialect where you borrow words from various languages. And so, and, and also on top of that, the Nguni languages, while they're very similar, one word in Siswati, it means something else in Zulu, it means something else in Kosa, and so it goes with, with, with the local dialects. So when this man says, that's what I heard, he's saying you are basically taking advantage of other men and their weaknesses as in the Achilles heel. And I've listened to, the, to, that, to, to, to that sentence over and over and over again. And then they go into a role play where the angry husband, who's now found out that his wife has been uh, sleeping with this man who's been sneaking into his house. And remember how this started? It started with that verse of the household of silly women. And I'm not going to keep repeating scriptures here. Whoever wants to listen will listen. Um, and what I love these days is, is, is about the, the, the web and the internet, and the internet is that you can literally go and type in a word and say, for instance, um, when you when, if you want to search for that scripture, you can you, 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 you can you can search for the houses of silly women, the houses of silly women verse, and it it, it will bring it up, and it will it will even bring up the cross references. So I'm not 
too perturbed if I don't necessarily even give the scripture, but they go into a role play and there's this angry husband who's busy shouting and throwing a tantrum about the wife that he's now found out has been cheating. And so I thought, ah, God is really marvelous because there is a scripture about the aggrieved husband when he finds out that his wife has been cheating. And it's in the book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 34. And I will open it up here. And it says, in, let me go to the voice first. Hmm. <laughs> it says, for jealousy sparks a husband's rage. When he gets his revenge, he'll show no mercy. He will not be paid off or appeased. No bribe or gift will set things right. Let me see what the Amplified says. For jealousy makes the wronged man furious. Therefore, he will not spare in the day of vengeance upon the detected one. He will not consider any ransom offered to, to buy him off from demanding full punishment. Neither will he be satisfied, though you offer him many gifts and bribes. There is no situation that God does not cover in the Bible. So I, I, I could not have imagined in my head that when I finished analyzing that song of the man who likes Nyonyo Barim sneaking into the houses of silly women, that he's going to now refer me to the scripture. But there we have it. And I did say <laughs> that God is on a mission. And his word will stand. The Bible says, you shall declare a thing and it shall be established unto you. And so this is also why God demands obedience from those of us he chooses to use for the advancement of his kingdom. You can't make up a ministry. It's not possible. If it was possible to just wake up and dream up a ministry and just, <laughs> you know, we'd all be in ministry doing whatever we, 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 we want. It doesn't, it does not work that way with a true vessel of God. And then I want to actually introduce the scripture. Psalm 105. Verse 15, and I'm going to take it first from the Amplified, from verse 14. It says, he allowed no man to do them wrong. In fact, he reproved kings for their sakes, saying, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Moreover, he called for a famine upon the land of Egypt. He cut off every source of bread. I couldn't have put it better myself. For the sake of his prophets, he's anointed. He reproved kings. He called for a famine on the land of Egypt. He cut off every source of bread. He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold as a servant. I said from the very beginning, and some of these scriptures I didn't even realize were there and articulated in the manner in which they are articulated. And I said, one man can set off a chain of events where people's livelihoods are cut off. People's sources of income are cut off. People's businesses are shut down. Their source of sustenance is cut off. This is what God did. Why? So that what he wanted done was done. Everybody had to go to Egypt to Joseph, to 
get their bread. And what is it about bread? King David was of the house of Jesse in Bethlehem. The house of bread. Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem. The house of bread. Now, let's go back to Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston is known to have sung two songs at the beginning of her career and one at the end. The first song she sang before she launched or she was launched into her music career is Bread of Heaven. The, the song is called Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. Psalm, Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer. Those of us that were raised in convent schools of the Anglican Church know that song. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Feed me till I want no more. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. The song she sang at the end of her life was, Yes, Jesus loves me, for the Bible tells me so. Now, at 1 Kings 10, there's an African queen who goes and visits King Solomon. She's called the Queen of Sheba. I'm not going to go into her visit today. I'm, I'm laying some things now for where we're going. Where I know God and I are going. First Kings 10. She visits King Solomon. She comes from an African kingdom called Ethiopia. Some call it Kush. Others will say it was somewhere in Yemen. It doesn't really matter. She came from there. And she trekked across the desert. And she went to visit King Solomon. The son. The biological son of King David. It says she went to test him with hard questions. Other versions will say she came to test him with riddles. But she came to test him. With hard questions and then in the new testament we are told that this queen of sheba will arise on the day of judgment to condemn this generation for their unbelief because she treads from millions and millions of miles away to come and hear king solomon but now there is a greater than Solomon, for the Lord Jesus Christ is called the son of David. He is the son of David, but he's also the son of God. But they were condemned to judgment for their unbelief. Why is that story important? Because the same Whitney Houston that has been here to visit me on so many times, sings a song, it's called My Love Is Your Love, but she starts off saying, if tomorrow is judgment day and I'm standing on the front line and the Lord asked me what I did with my life, I'll say I spent it with you. That is Whitney Houston. The song is called My Love Is Your Love. I would wonder why the woman keeps coming to me. I'm not a spirit medium. Though some think that I am, I'm not. I don't throw bones for all these people to come to me. But one thing I do know, for the souls that have passed on to the next realm, who have gotten there and they've realized they didn't do what they were supposed to have done here on the earth, they then also want to come back and finish, and they can't because their time on the earth is up. So God allows them to come to me, and that is not unbiblical. There's a story somewhere in the New Testament of a man who 
asked another man called Lazarus, not the Lazarus that was raised by Jesus Christ in the village of Bethany in the Bible, but another Lazarus. I think this was a rich man who wanted this poor man now to warn his brothers. I think that's what he said, to warn his brothers about hell. <laughs> Because he had since gone to hell and he wasn't having a good time there. And it said he saw this poor man, this poor Lazarus. <laughs> so, the, meaning what? The distance between, <laughs> between the kingdom of God and where hell is, it's, 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 it's not that much of a great divide. Because it seems to me that he could see Lazarus there and he said to Lazarus, <laughs> please, one. <laughs> I have to actually look it up. Yeah, it says here, it's Luke chapter 16, verse 27 to 31. Let me look it up in the voice. The voice of Whitney Houston. <laughs> Luke chapter 16, verse 27. It says, and the man said, yes, yes. yes. The people who died before Jesus Christ was glorified didn't go to, sorry, the righteous who died before Jesus was glorified didn't go to heaven. Apparently, they went to the bosom of Abraham. So this is what he says now when he's begging. He says, please, Father Abraham, I beg you. The formerly rich man continued, send Lazarus to my father's house. I have five brothers there. And they're on the same path I was on. If Lazarus warns them, they'll choose another path and won't end up here in torment. But Abraham said, why send Lazarus? They already have the law of Moses and the writings of the prophets to instruct them. Let your brothers hear them. He continued pleading. No, Father Abraham, he said. They're already ignoring the law and the prophets. But if someone came back from the dead, then they'd listen for sure. Then they'd change their way of life. Abraham answered, if they're not listening to Moses and the prophets, they won't be convinced even if someone comes back from the dead. So there's the story. It's in the Bible. There's a man who was already dead and was suffering the torment of hell and wanted to warn his brothers. But Abraham said, nothing doing. <laughs> it's not, it's not going to happen. So I've got all these tormented souls that are trying to communicate. But people still won't listen. And I can't make them listen. So I'm not even interested in doing that. What I'm interested in right now is just doing God's work. But I'm glad that God is talking about the law of Moses and the writings of the prophets. Because when I was being sued, there are certain gentlemen who crossed the border and went to the kingdom of Eswatini to tell my parents that the law was now involved in my midst. So they were told, is the phrase that this particular uh, brother of the brotherhood used, yes, umteto, umteto meaning the law. So the law is now in the middle and there are now what was it protection orders and washawatima so you know my parents were being threatened with the law and so in the midst of me being sued at the octave magistrate court i went and got a lawyer and I filed for my divorce at the high court. So my matter is pending at the high court where God has left it for five years since September 2018 because that's when I filed for it. And it's just been standing there. And I hear all the stories about how the Jukdom of Maseru gets told that I am delaying the process, I am being impossible, 
I am making things very nasty. I am being unreasonable. It was never the show of the brotherhood, the swipe. It was never even my show. This was always about the Lord Jesus Christ. And so now he is going to append his signature on my divorce and my settlement of this matter once and for all. And when he does it, he'd already done it then. When he does it, he will get the glory. There's not a man who's going to say, well, I helped her out of that. No. He knew I wasn't the quagmire. He was with me in it. Why? Because he wanted his name to be spread all over the land so that even the heathens of Egypt, of Babylon, the last pharaohs of, of truth, the brothers of Alpha Phi Alpha would know that my God lives. And with that, I'll end this video right here. I can't wait another minute.